down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing when you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. Late summer is a great time to go into northern Ontario wilderness lakes. Air temperatures are starting to fall, biting insects are gone, and leaves are just starting to change into their fall colors. This is an excellent time to target bass, walleye, and pike using a variety of techniques in different parts of the lake. One nice thing when you fish up here is that there's a lot of sand bottom. So if you find structure, you can usually find fish. So it's going to be a walleye, big rock bass. Look at, look at the size of these rock bass. And look, look at the size of that finesse fish bait. It's actually four and a half inches long, and they have no problem going for it. I'm going to be a real sportsman. And look, gently get him into the water. Yeah, he's a real slab. And there he goes, right back down. Hey, big rock bass. A lot of guys call these red eye. I don't know if you can see. They actually have a pretty bright red eye. But look, for how small he is, see how wide his back is? Yes, River, look. It's a rock bass. So it's actually good eating size, but we're gonna let this guy go. There he goes. River, look, we got lots of fish on the screen. Maybe we're in a big school of rock bass. She's saying, what, what, you let it go? In late summer, as temperatures start to fall and days get shorter, both walleye and pike literally migrate into shallower water, just like they do in the spring. The only difference is that in the spring, they migrate into shallow water to spawn. In the fall, they migrate into shallow water to do some heavy feeding before the lake gets really cold, ice is over, where they become less active and move into deeper water. Another whopper rock bass or a small walleye? Give me some shoulders. Give me some shoulders. Ugh, it's a bigger one. I know what you're thinking. You're saying that is a really nice rock bass. Yeah, it is. It's got like over a pound. And he inhaled that finesse fish. There, got it out. Look it. Guess where he's going? In the live well. Gonna get some nice fillets off that guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's a live well rock bass. Chunky, man, whatever they're feeding on, these guys are fatties. They got full stomachs. We're getting quite a few, that's about six or eight. It's going in the live well. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cable's Eyewear Retainer. Lightweight, comfortable, adjustable, and waterproof. As summer slowly changes into fall, pikes, instead of moving into shallow water, they'll come out of their shallow water summer haunts and move closer to deeper water. So you'll find them on the edges of reeds, reefs, points that stick out into deeper water, and even at the mouths of bays. And their feeding slows down a little bit. It really helps to use slower moving baits. Swim baits work really well fish just below the surface and even jigged as you swim them back to the boat and especially twitch baits and crank baits that you can work slower and somewhere suspended in the water column. You 
know, we started early this morning and it was really foggy, temperature pretty cool. So I'm actually layered up. I've got about three, four layers. I was wearing gloves running in the boat, you know, so when you get into like the end of August, early September, the weather can really change when you get up into Northern Ontario. But what we found is a spot here where there's a nice rock outcrop in about 20 feet of water. So we've marked it because there's a lot of fish here. And on the sonar, on the raymarine, we're like marking fish steady. Yeah, nice little walleye. This would be considered an eater. It's probably about uh, 13, 14 inches long. You know, a lot of people like to keep larger fish, especially if they go to like a wilderness lake, even though Elk Lake is a drive to location. But keeping fish that are anywhere from about, I'd say 14 to 17 inches is ideal. And you can see that they're pretty wide. Okay, little walleye. I love those little white spots on the fins. Look, pretty. Didn't have him out of the water too long. There he goes, nice and easy. Now, because it's early in the morning, I'm really concentrating on my electronics. This is where we got fish last night, where I've got those two little X's, and you can see all our drift patterns here, because we marked the track. I want you to see the structure that's going to come up in about 19 feet. As soon as I mark that structure, I'm going to jump to the front and I'm going to throw a marker out. So look, these are walleye on the bottom. See these marks, the flat lines? Look at, that's bait fish, a nice school of bait fish. And I'm looking for that hard structure. I bet you it's going to be, look at, there it is right there. This is the hard structure just to the right. So what I'm going to do now is just go to the front of the boat and drop my marker in. Now you know, these are simple markers. I've got a couple of them out. If you haven't used them before, it's just a piece of lead, and this is the actual marker. Because it's got flat sides, you'll see when it's dropping, when the lead is dropping, it's going to be unwinding. But once the lead hits the bottom, it's going to sit on one of the flat sides. It's going to mark our spot. See the way it's spinning and it's unraveling? And in a minute, it's going to hit the bottom. Hopefully, it won't hit a fish on the head. All right. You know, this is amazing. This is right next to the marker. Look at how nice this fish looks with this low light, gorgeous walleye, rivers all over. Look at, she's up on the, on the gunwale. She says, come here, you. I love getting these northern walleyes. I like it when you just see the jig head sticking out of its mouth. Okay, beautiful fish, but he's going back. Okay, look at beautiful walleye. Man, he was ready to go. You know, the winds really picked up and the walleye fishing slowed down. So what we did, we started casting some shorelines and I have a crankbait on and I've got a pike. It's not a monster, but you know what? On light line, you can see, oh, there he goes. Yes, perfect release. Many of the near north lakes in Ontario instead of having very hard rocky shorelines and rocky structure under the water, actually have a lot of sand. And the walleyes adapt really well to those conditions. And fishing the edges of these sand breaks where the water goes anywhere from about 16 to 25 feet can be key to locating the fish. Sometimes you will find some hard structure, bottom structure in open water, and it's usually related to those sandbars that meet the deeper water. This is awesome. You know, we took a break. We're here at Elk Lake Wilderness Resort, and they've got about 12 lakes, back lakes, that you can go into to fish everything from lake trout, splake, and bass. So look, is that a nice little smallmouth to start things off with? Look at how nice and dark he is. Gorgeous fish. So this is one of the many fish you can get here when you come up to Elk Lake, and it's about 10 kilometers from the lodge. I can't tell you the name because I don't know it, but you know what? You can get bass like this all day long. You won't find me talking about tackle storage systems often, 
but I got to show you some of the really nifty ones that are out. You know, if we're going to a back lake, I usually have a backpack where you can put the satchels inside and you can put it on your back, especially if you're hauling stuff for motors and things, paddles and other gear into a back lake so you're not carrying things because it's really hard to have more than a few things in your hands. This particular tackle box is a really nice system because it's small. It's got trays that hinge out on both sides. So I've got my soft plastics in this particular one. I have a lot of my weights, my jig heads here, and then I have the soft plastics inside. This is a ribster, it's made by Lunker City. And you can see how limp it is. Sometimes limp is good. Look it, it's not straight like this with just the tail pointing down. The whole thing, because it's ribbed, is very flexible. That means when it's going through the water column, when you're retrieving it especially, that tail really slaps back and forth. You know, this is old school. We're in an aluminum boat. Nice bass. Oh man, what a fighter. You know, it doesn't matter if you get them just below the surface. We can actually see these fish come up and our plastic grubs disappear. Look at this. You know, he's not a huge fish, but when you're fishing a remote lake like this, and we're told that there's good sized pike in here and also big walleye. So I like the fact, you know, when you come up north, especially like seven, eight hours north of the GTA or eight hours north of Buffalo, New York, a lot of people that are local don't fish for bass. Look at how beautiful that bass looks with that grub sticking out of his mouth. So a lot of these lakes don't get any pressure for the bass because most people concentrate on walleye. You know, this is a classic bass lake. We've got lily pads, you can see the pads. Look at how gorgeous that fish is. I'm just gonna take my hand away. Goodbye, large mouth. There he goes. Elk Lake is an expansion of the Montreal River. At the bottom end, there are rapids that you can't go over by boat. You can park your boat and walk down and fish the rapids. And at the upper end, at the inflow, there is a dam. It actually gives you 41 kilometers of fishable water that's a fisherman's paradise. The nice thing about this section of the Montreal River is that there's one really big expansion, and they refer to it as Mountain Lake. The rest of the river is very narrow, and it's covered with reeds on both sides and structure that goes up and down. Sometimes you go through channels that are only about 50 yards wide, but the water's 25 feet deep. And at any time, you can catch fish anywhere. You know, when you come up here to Elk Island Resort, the service is amazing. One of the things I wanted to show you, because we've been getting a lot of fish, I'm getting a little bit hungry. They pack these nice lunches per person. Even the wrap that I've got inside here is in a re recyclable paper. Look, they're not using lunch bags. We've got a balance of fruit, a, a thing of water. What a great way, look, to be on the water. So we're here on a wilderness lake. We've got these beautiful lunch things. And we're gonna be taking all this back, but I really like the idea that the plastic and everything is recyclable. And you know what? Their food is awesome. This is a slab smallmouth. This is so much fun. You know, I feel like a kid because we're just going along and trying different spots in this lake to see where the fish are. Look at the size of this bass. Come here, stay away from the boat. Again, don't know how well it's hooked. God, it's fighting like crazy. It's one thing about these bass in Northern Ontario. Uh-oh, he's just got one hook in there. They just don't give up. All right, now, See, look at, he's hooked on the front hook. So I gotta be super careful. Look at, isn't that a nice smallmouth? We're staying up here at Elk Island Resort. And I'll tell you, they're wonderful cottages. I love that um, they actually prepare the meals. It's, they are home cooked meals and they deliver them to your cabin. And these beautiful box lunches that we have. And look at, we're getting these fish all day long. This is the middle of the day, folks. And we took a break from the walleye fishing and getting some big pan fish. And now we're getting these beautiful smallmouths.
Yes. Come on, bass. Yeah. Nice small mouth. I mean, look at the structure and wood that we've got on this lake. Isn't this amazing? I mean, if you love bass fishing, you know how important it is to have good rocky bottom, steep dropping shorelines, wood. Look it. Isn't that a gorgeous smallmouth? And he smashed that plastic bait. See if I can get him in close. You know, it's so nice here at Elk Lake Wilderness Resort, besides fishing the main lake for walleye, smallmouth, and pike, you can also go to about 12 different lakes. Some of them that you have to just walk into and fish from shore. Some that have boats like this, where you can get beautiful smallmouth all day long, northern pike, and the chance of getting a trophy walleye. It's not gonna take long, I'm just gonna let him out there. There he goes. I'd love to get these smallmouth on a twitch bait. Come on, look it. I want him to use that energy just so that I can get him in without getting a hook in my hand and release him real quick. What a beautiful fish. Come on. I think he's almost tired. You gotta be patient. You know, so many of us, when we're fishing, we wanna get a fish, and when we get a fish, we wanna get it in real quick. We don't really enjoy the fight. So I'm gonna try just lifting the line because I'm tied directly to 20 pound braid. So it should be okay, good. And I wanna show you, don't flop, ah, there. Look at this is that new twitch bait by Rapala. It's called a Rapala Ripstop. And just while I've got the fish here, before I release it, I wanna explain, cause it lures actually facing him. We use the pliers. If you look here, the tail has a little bit of a fin that goes down. Do you see that little fin right there? It's almost like some of the swim baits. So what that does when you're retrieving it, it gives it a real side-by-side -side action. But when you pull on it, it actually darts and you stop, it stops real quick. That's why it's called a rip stop. Notice the metallic paint there too, the silver and the gold, that really attracts the fish to hit. You can see this guy hit it head first, so he was serious. And it's equipped with very sharp, not too large hooks. And I like the size. It's like the perfect minnow side. I'm guessing that's about three and a half, almost four inches long, tapered, just like a bait fish. Look it, right here from Northern Ontario. It's beautiful, about eight hours drive from Buffalo, New York. And you can catch bass like this all day long. Elk Lake Wilderness Resort is located on about a 41 kilometer expansion of the Montreal River, and all of it is a fisherman's paradise. It's only about a seven and a half hour drive from Buffalo, New York. They offer 10 comfortable waterfront cottages that have all the amenities of home. There's ample docking and power hookups that make sure your boat is charged and ready for each day's adventure. You can trailer your own boat, they're very close to the highway, or you can rent one of theirs that's outfitted with a really nice outboard and even fish finder. After a day's fishing, you can even have a home cooked meal delivered right to your cottage. In the morning, we normally make our own breakfast, and what I like most of all, they are pet friendly. Tell you what, it's fun to get smallmouth anyway, but on top water, amazing. Can you tell this guy came just off those weeds? Look at the weeds that are on my skitter pop. See if I can just turn him around here a little bit. I don't know that he's done yet. He's actually turning the boat. I love it. Keeping that rod nice and high. See if I can heave this guy in. Hopefully he won't drop off. Look at this. Not a big fish, but you know, when you're getting these in the middle of the day, we thought we'd come in here and spend three or four hours, and it's just amazing. We've tried all kinds of baits. Now I took the top water out and started throwing it around. We had a pike on just before that. This is what it's all about when you come up north here, especially like September is a great month into October to get these smallmouth on top waters. Aren't they gorgeous fish? Look at the colors on this fish. I don't care how good of a taxidermist you are, you cannot replicate that. Look it, isn't that beautiful? Bye bye, Mr. Smallmouth. Oh, such a pretty release. I love fishing transition periods in North America, especially in the northern part where you have definite four seasons. I love the spring to summer transition when water goes from cool to warm. 
and also the summer to fall transition when water does the opposite, it goes from warm to cool. That's when you can find fish at different locations. Sometimes it takes a little bit of thinking and evaluation to figure out a pattern, but you can usually find fish shallow, like bass and walleye and even pike, and you can also find fish deep and fish going in between. Yeah, baby, gorgeous. I love the hits. I love the misses. It's so wonderful when you get them on these top water. We're in the afternoon, it's by no mean evening, but uh, it's getting to be about uh, 3, 3.30. And you notice I'm being very careful because I've got one treble hook in the roof of the mouth and one dangling. You know, no matter what size of fish you get, this size or even small like that, you want to be gentle with them. You don't want to hurt them. So let's see if this guy's going to take off real quick. Here he goes. Hi, I'm Roger. This is my wife, Mary Jo. We're the proud owners of the Elk Lake Wilderness Resort, located a short drive from southern Ontario. We're located on the Montreal River. It's a quiet part of the river system, and on this river we've got pickerel, pike, bass, perch, and some people come up for our panfish, our rock bass and perch. We offer any kind of package you can want, anything from a housekeeping plan all the way up to an all-inclusive, worry-free, meals-provided, boat-provided vacation. We have 10 fully appointed waterfront cottages. We have a docking facility complete with shore power, a fish cleaning hut. You, you can also rent one of our boats if you choose not to bring your own. Everything you could possibly want for your family fishing vacation. You know, it was definitely worth the effort coming into this back lake. This is just amazing. We have had non-stop action. Even with this small boat, with just having a little outboard, no electric, we haven't had to anchor. We're just drifting and casting and getting these gorgeous smallmouth in a variety of lures and presentations. Look at gorgeous smallmouth. I mean, all of them, so beautiful. And I don't think very many of them see lures here, especially like, you know, lures with propellers on them or some of the soft plastics we've been using. They're just beautiful. Okay, and to let you go, baby. Wow. Canadian Sport Fishing has been brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. Any wonder they call it a shaker? And I put it on a round jig head. The round jig head will prevent it from doing that planing. It'll actually drop straight. So whether it's dropping down, or whether I'm pulling it up, or whether it's traveling horizontally, that tail is always going back and forth. Great lure when fish are active, and you need something to track them so they come in and smash it. And that fish was hooked right in the roof of the mouth.